da 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 subjects the people that i've talked about the people of color uh have an important part in america's history these are historical figures from the past 100 years specifically the 20th century but i want to talk about someone who is a very of now the, the 20th century this person is a contemporary artist and that's a, is that a new word for you contemporary janelle monet she she's relevant to this month's topic because she brings consciously brings a lot of influences from the 20th century black culture black music black history but also other movements, women's movements, uh, gay and lesbian movements. Uh, <laughs> kid or cat, hello, thank you, thank you. Uh, and you're coming from a great server. Um, shout out to Kim Chica, absolutely, and the whole Wholesome Games community. Right, so, um, Janelle Monáe brings all of that into her music and her style, but at the same time, her image and her vocabulary talks about the future. She, she brings kind of this narrative to each album or each stage of her artistic stream. <laughs> uh, a, a, a kind of narrative. So, so she did one where is Android, and then the other was uh, electric. Then, there was a, a future empire ruled by by a queen uh, who ascended into a kind of a, an electric realm. And then that, and then it kind of evolved where there wasn't a queen, but it was an androgynous ruler with very feminine attributes. If you look at her influences, like, you know, there was like when she was doing, you know, Electric Lady, like her music, she had a music video that was very, very inspired by Prince. She did another video, I think black and lesbian themes and what does identity mean with that? Um, in, and also what, what, what does sexy mean? And and with that music, she brought a lot of James Brown. <laughs> who, who, very sexy music, a very, very motivational, inspirational form of entertainment. But, but the dude himself was a, a, a terrible person. <laughs> but hey, but, but mad respect. That, that she that she brought that energy uh, into the conversation. Talking a little bit more, I wanted to talk about how they relate to this month's topic, which is uh, African American History and Black History Month. Uh, I use those interchangeably because I was told in two different directions that's the appropriate way to have the conversation. Um, it's it's it is a culture month. It's a history month. It is a, a month to give voice to a representation that doesn't get that voice. Um, but it's also the shortest month of the year. <laughs> and every once in a while, they get an extra day. <laughs> every every four years, they get an extra day. <laughs> Um, so how does Janelle Mene tie in to uh, Black History Month means Valentine's Month? I chose romantic figures, and I chose specifically love songs. And if there's anybody he, who brings just, just is imbued with romance, sexuality, and ambiguous uh gender and sexuality and black history and black culture uh it all comes together into the brilliant mind 
and just beautiful soul of Janelle Monae. I would pay all the monies to see them in concert. Um, I'd noticed them way back in the when, and in fact, I'm going to prove it to you. This was, I think this is their Android period. Um, I want to say, or maybe it's tightrope. But anyway, it's the same, whatever. You have to understand something here. Um, and then, and then I'm going um, to, well, well, then there's this, there's the, I think this is a electric lady period. This has to be electric lady because I recognize the black and white. She, she's, she's evolving the black and white, right? And then here she really, in, in this era, she's really pushing the, what is the feminine form? And like, you can see like, even in, in the music video, in this, this still, um, it's like using a mask. The black and white is masking the form. So it's hard to see the female form, but they're all in these super sexy tight dresses, mini dresses and dancing very evocatively and provocatively and, and a lot of sensuality. But, but almost invisible, right? And, and all of this, all of this is a, not some executive's vision and not some choreographer's vision of how it should be. This is all, this is all Janelle Mene and all no budget. So understand something. When I noticed them uh, in their, their early music YouTube, YouTube videos, uh, they were like 16, 17 years old. And for several years, I was a high school teacher and, and, a, and a university teacher and a top freshman. And I, and I, and I went to all my students' performances if I, if I could, um, if I was a teacher or wasn't doing something else at the time, I, I, you know, I'd go out and, you know, uh, if there was like a, a stage show or a theater production or, or a dance, usually it's dance, like some sort of like street dance uh, performance going on. I, I went, I would watch, I'd go and watch and just uh, so much talent, just, just uh, so much talent and enthusiasm and motivation and, and ambition. And it was all there in the early YouTube videos uh, of Janelle Monet. But here's the thing, there's so much brilliance Right, a very conscious dis style choice, very conscious decision. That's so impressive is how centered they were. They knew what they wanted and how they wanted it to look. Um, and they also brought in a lot of their friends and family and also local performers who, who had that talent but didn't get the recognition and so when they had the money and could do these performances, that they would include them in that the community should involve the community with them. Then they got into acting, and one of the one of the criticisms about their early acting is that it's very stiff, it's very wooden. But you know what? For someone who doesn't have an acting career before and didn't have any acting training, and it's was basically just a just a singer and a dancer being asked to, hey, memorize these lines and any motor thing. Um, I don't think they did too bad. Uh, and something else that I realized is they have something that I call uh, the, the Ryan Gosling curse, right? The Ryan Gosling curse. If you look at any Ryan Gosling movie, he always looks either stoned or sad. And it's all in the eyes. It, for some reason, he, he's, his eyes don't emote well. He, he can't really emote his eyes very well. They always have this more or less fixed kind of sad dog look that's usually interpreted as kind of emo or just a stoner. And something Ryan Gosling did that's interesting is at some point, right around when he did Drive, recognized this and decided to accept roles that would allow him to perform around this this weakness like he can't make it he can't emote through his eyes it's just not his strength but he could do roles that can utilize this and so if you look at his roles from drive onwards they're quite different 
um, he doesn't do like La La Land is a very good example of this. So that's a that's a very risky role, but he, his face does not emote that much, but he but he uses his whole body to do that. Janal Mane has the same thing. She has very big bright eyes that don't change at all, and so one of the criticisms about her roles is they they conflate weak woodenness with um, flat doll eyes. And that's just because she always has these bright, enthusiastic, this look on her face. It's always turned on. She can't turn it off. It's just kind of how her face is constructed, right? Um, and she did a role recently, um, well, relatively recently, um, where, and it was a big role, is her first really major role where she plays uh, the secretary, a secretary for NASA in the 1960s. And what she does is she uses her eyes to express a kind of innocence, but the language she uses through the story, and the part of it is the direction as well, is it, it's hiding, hey, this is what it's like for women, especially black women in the South. <laughs> to perform positive, to be positive and happy and cheerful and yes sir, yes ma'am, you know, and, and she let her eyes work that, but hiding a lot of the pain and the frustration and annoyance um, behind that. Brilliant, brilliant. So she's using, she's, she knows that's there and so she's using, using it. Um, I didn't care for Antebellum and I don't think that's her fault. It just wasn't a very good story. You'll notice that I'm not playing um, any of Janelle Monáe's music. Just I has I haven't been playing any music from from any of the other artists from this month. That's because I don't have their rights. Simple as that. <laughs> Janelle Monáe, uh, a person of color, I think romantic and uh, a, a pioneer who has not forgotten the historical legacy of of people of color behind her uh, um, and I and it shows so thank you so much for uh, allowing me the space to talk about uh, a person who someday when I grow up I want to be like them <laughs> Janelle Mene and I encourage you to find them on Spotify give them a listen um, a lot of it is sit down and listen music a lot of it is party music and a lot of it is thinking music so just kind of be prepared for that so just be aware also uh watch their music videos uh especially their earlier ones which are self-produced so yeah give that give that a try so thank you and uh see you next time and happy valentine's month